Good morning, Internet. My name is Craig Chamberlain. You're watching the PCM Tech Help Show. It is November 22nd, 2013, and we are working on the second part of my How to Make Money on YouTube series. Now, remember, the PCM Tech Help Show broadcasts daily. It uh, starts around 7 to 8 a.m. Got a little bit of a late start this morning, and uh, I really try to start as early as I possibly can. Um, and uh, what we do is we give you, or I give you, common sense advice for that tech in your life. So during the show, feel free to ask questions at any point in time. You can post the questions in the Google Plus feed below this video. From what I understand, the mobile users are having a lot of trouble with the Ask a Question button. I prefer if you can click the Ask a Question button that you click it. If you can't, that's fine. Or you can post a question directly on YouTube. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to basically give a quick overview of what we talked about yesterday and uh, after we do that we're going to move on forward with how to make money on YouTube everything that you need to know in order to make money on YouTube now before we get started let me go ahead and quick shoot out a quick share with everybody who's following me on the internet that way those of you who are out there can see that we are uh, you know actually broadcasting um, so uh, hopefully there it goes all right, we just sent it, so we're good to go. Now, yesterday, we went over some really important things on making money on YouTube. Uh, this isn't as simple as, um, it's not as simple as just jumping right in and just saying, I'm going to make tons of money. So what we did is we talked about the make a living thing. Uh, you have to have realistic expectations. This isn't going to happen overnight. Uh, Eli Etherton, or Eli the Computer Guy, made a comment yesterday. And uh, I was reluctant to say it at first, uh, but it's absolutely right. Um, when you are building a brand or a business, um, he, he said days, weeks, months. It's more like uh, weeks, months, years. And uh, I think that timeline is a little more realistic. When I was building my profile or my presence on YouTube with PCM, uh, and I've only got 20,000 subscribers, mind you, um, it took me about six years. Now, my story is a little different. I have a full-time job. I, I do this whenever I can. Um, I also didn't really know what I was doing for the first four years, even maybe even five years. Actually, I really didn't know what I was doing until till about maybe seven months ago. Um, but it was all a learning curve. Uh, Eli, on the other hand, was one of those guys who had been in business a long time, had a lot of experience, loads of, uh, loads of information to share, knew what his passion and dreams were, jumped right into YouTube. Within, I think it was a year or two, had over 100,000 subscribers. And to this day, he has 212,000. So... Like I said yesterday, it depends on the kind of person you are. It depends on how hard you tackle it. it depends on uh, your content. It depends on your audience base. It depends on a lot of factors. But this isn't something that happened for me or Eli or any YouTuber I know overnight. Um, this is something that organic growth has to take place. So have realistic expectations. Um, we also talked about YouTube being uh, pretty much the dominant player in the future of uh, entertainment media. And I should have said entertainment and news media. When I went back and listened to it again, uh, it's not just going to be entertainment that people use YouTube for. Um, uh, inter inter I would say entertainment, news, and education media are uh, at the forefront for YouTube. So I don't want to say that, yes, it's just going to be entertainment. Of course, it's going to be uh, much more than that. And yesterday we elaborated why YouTube was a safe bet for the future of entertainment and why it's a good time to kind of get involved with YouTube as far as making money online. Um, another thing we discussed was if you aim for money, you're probably going to be disappointed. I mean, if you're only going out there to make loads and loads of cash, the first few weeks or months, like uh, we talked about, uh, are going to be a nightmare for you because you're not going to be making much. Uh, there are exceptions to this rule, but very few. Um, but uh, you will be disappointed if your primary goal is to make money immediately, which uh, gave me the huge emphasis on starting with your passions. We talked about that. You are a walking Venn diagram, things like that. Uh, we talked about where to start building your profile, where, uh, how to make it, uh, creating a channel or Google Plus page. Now, this is actually another point that Eli brought up in the comments, and I think I, I agree with him on this was that you want to have a, a name that is unique enough that it will be brandable. So in other words, you're not stealing somebody else's brand, but it is a name for your channel that is unique enough so that it stands out in its own way. But like I talked about yesterday, it has to be something that's it's easy to spell, easy to remember, 
and uh, and that uh, will basically over time evolve. Now, this is something you have to nail down right out of the box. Not everybody knows what their show is going to be called right when they get started. And I discussed only in limited detail marketing when it comes to a YouTube standpoint. But uh, either in either case, it's not exactly one of those things where you're just going to say, hey, i got to have it all figured out when I get started. And that was... Eli, by the way, that was one of the reasons I was reluctant to kind of evolve on that topic because we're actually going to be talking more about marketing and branding today. Uh, yesterday's video was kind of just getting people prepped uh, for those concepts. Uh, camera and audio basics. You can use just a standard HD webcam, standard microphone. Uh, you can use your cell phone. Uh, the technology is there. It's cheap. It's there and it's cheap. So take full advantage of it. Uh, you can get those little flip cameras. Those work great. Um, I don't even know if those are even still around. I mean, they might have been replaced with something cheaper by now. Uh, HD cell phones are, are astounding as long as you get like a tripod. You can get a tripod with a little adapter for them. The adapters usually cost maybe $5. And so you can go ahead and grab one of those, and then you'll be in business. I mean, you can record the video on, on right on your phone. Uh, in a lot of cases, you can edit it right on the phone, or you can drop it right on your computer, edit it in Movie Maker or some other piece of software. Uh, there's tons of them out there. And then uh, get uploading. And lastly, we talked about uh, creating content. Creating content was kind of the key discussion we talked about at the end of the day yesterday. I want to touch on it a little more this morning, and then we're going to move forward. Now remember, if you're just now joining us, this is the PCM Tech Help Show. My goal here is to give you guys common sense advice for that tech in your life. So during the show, remember, ask questions right on Google Plus in the Google Plus feed, click, or click the Ask a Question button, or post your questions right on YouTube. And uh, I will do my best to get those during the show. I will segue to them periodically, especially if I read them and see that they're relevant to the topic I'm discussing. If it's not relevant, I'll probably leave those questions till the end of the actual episode. But all questions are welcome. Creating content. As we talked about, you have a unique Venn diagram. You are a unique person. You have a set of experiences. You have a set of interests. And you also have a set of... Um, of knowledge, okay, and when those three circles intersect, there's the unique person that is you, and uh, you are the one who actually kind of illustrates that particular uh, presence in whatever market you're interested in. Um, may take a while for you to figure out where all that intersection takes place. Took me years uh, of doing YouTube before I finally feel like I've found where I belong, um, but that's all normal. Uh, the, the important thing is that you keep creating content. The beautiful thing about YouTube is, by the way, the Venn diagram thing. That's Chris Perillo's, uh, not my idea. The Venn diagram thing and the, uh, the the beautiful thing about YouTube is that they're a very forgiving audience, okay? They're not going to sit there and, and expect the show to be uh, beautiful immediately, right when you right when you start out. They're not going to expect you to just jump into it and be a professional YouTube broadcaster or, uh, or have all the confidence in the world or even know what you're talking about or doing. And it's kind of an endearing thing because they, they – it's one thing if you're watching like CBS, NBC, Fox, right, these huge multi-million dollar companies and they're producing content and then they're putting that content out there and um, what's happening is is you see like this end product that's been filtered through so many channels that if it's if it's bad, then you're like you, – you're, you just have this – animosity towards it. You know, it's like after all the money they threw into this, all the work they put into this, all the shows they probably turned down to, because of this, and, and this is how it turned out? That's ridiculous. You know, these people do this for a living. It's their full-time job. Why? Why would it turn out this bad? The, the attitude on YouTube is the polar opposite. You're actually seeing the person doing the content production. You're seeing all the hard work he's putting into it. You're seeing him screw up live, or you're seeing him screw up or make mistakes. But it's it's all part of like it's like this endearing element of the show. It makes you feel like almost like you're part of the show. So if you're starting out your own YouTube show and you're getting started and you're afraid to get started because you're afraid you're gonna have uh, a bunch of flaws and failures, bad lighting, bad audio, bad presence, bad everything. <laughs> that's awesome. That show that stuff actually helps your show grow. I kid you not. YouTubers love it. I love it. I love watching a show where a guy is actually sitting there working on. Uh, whatever it is he's working on, I, it could be anything. And then something silly happens, like the cat meows in the background, or you hear the kids crying, or something, and he's like, "Oh, that's embarrassing." It, it's just there's some human element of it that really enriches the YouTube experience. And, and you know, as long as the show evolves over time, and it's not a constant thing, like you constantly hear kids screaming every episode, then you're like, "Okay, well, this guy's not even trying." Uh, but but these things are kind of like a a cool part of the experience of YouTube. 
And and that's that's what I love. And this is why I said I think YouTube is the most beautiful. And I'm saying that literally. It's the most beautiful content production um, and uh, content delivery system out there because it brings the 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 artwork or the the news or technology or whatever you want to call it directly to the end user from the producer. And they see firsthand, like I said, from the horse's mouth, what the actual producer wants them to see. There's no middleman. There's nobody cutting it up. I've seen I've seen so many movies and television shows and played so many video games. I'm a big entertainment buff, a big media buff, that I've just seen too many good, great ideas, great concepts destroyed by by analysis, by overthinking, by writers who have no idea about the actors, actors who don't care about the writers, you name it, producers, directors, all that. But creating content is an essential part of the show, and it's an essential part of your channel. Because remember, your entire success on YouTube is based on your content. It's, it's Your marketing helps your... Your uh, your speech helps, you know, being able to, to deliver good messages, it helps. Uh, having good lighting, it helps. Uh, having a marketing and a business strategy, it helps. These things help, but at the end of the day, it doesn't, in, many, in most cases, it doesn't matter how bad your audio is. It doesn't matter how bad your video is. In many cases, if your content is solid and gold and it's there, people will just look past all of those details. And this is something I really wanted to emphasize this morning before we go forward with our strategy on how you're going to make money on YouTube. Because the biggest hurdle for most people who are getting started in this industry, including myself, by the way, I'm speaking from experience, is jumping over that initial idea of, of am I going to screw this up? Am I, am, I, am I going to make one video that makes everybody hate me? Uh, no, that's, that's not going to happen. Um, there's just too much out there and, and, and the YouTube audience is incredibly forgiving. They'll see your video. If it's bad, they'll just click the back button, but they're not even going to really sit here and judge you for it. They're just going to come back later if you have something else interesting to say. Uh, it, it's really an incredibly forgiving audience, and it's it's one of my favorite audiences to deal with for that reason. Um, and, and like I said, I think, I think they're a lot more forgiving because they're dealing with the person creating the content directly, and, and you know, it just, it's just part of the deal. It's just part of the deal, and it's a cool, a cool thing for anybody who's interested in doing this. Um, now let's move forward with a uh, upload strategy. Okay, people are like, okay, Craig, I'm going to create content. How much content should I create? How much time should I spend on it? How much, how much money should I spend on it? Uh, uh, what should I do? Well, it's easy. I mean, really, it, it's it's easy. Um, creating content, rule of thumb: don't make anything you wouldn't want to watch. Okay, so if you're really forgiving about audio, video, and lighting, and things like that, then then be forgiving about those things. Uh, but the real trick here isn't, it's not to make as much content as possible. It's to make as much quality content as possible. Because remember, and you're going to hear this phrase from the SEO nerds, the search engine nerds, content is king. And, and that is abs an absolute truth. <laughs> Content is what dominates your presence across the board on any service, whether it be uh, whether it be writing articles for a blog, whether it be making videos on YouTube, whether it be uh, growing on social social media. People follow content. People love content. Content is king. It is a producer and consumer business. You are producing content. They are consuming content. Com I'm sorry, they're consuming content. This is just a huge, prominent part of the business. So when it comes to how often should I upload, the more the better. That's always how it works, okay? Now, where this line is drawn, where this changes or where it shifts is if I say the more the better, I'm not saying turn out 10 really crappy videos instead of one really awesome one. What I'm saying is the more high-quality content that lives up to your standard, the better. If that means you got to spend 20, 30 hours a week to develop really good, high-quality content, 5, 10, 15 videos a week, which is insane, by the way. But if you can do it, then do it. If you can make a lot of high-quality content, create it, publish it, get it out there, because that's how you're going to really start landing that uh, that business. If you're like me, and you've got a wife and kids, and you've got, um, and you've got a full-time job, and your kids are really young, too, that doesn't help, then you just got to do whatever you can. You don't have you don't have to you're gonna grow slower absolutely true you are gonna grow slower but guess what you're gonna grow it took me six years to get to the point I'm at and I've had a wife and kids almost the whole time 
and, and that's that's the thing. And I haven't grown as fast as other people, but that's why is because I have not had the time to build as much quality content up to my standard as I would like. Then I look at a guy like Eli who throws himself into it full time, just passionately pursuing it nonstop, making quality content over quality content, video after video after video that lives up to his standard, and he just skyrockets. And it's just a perfect testimony to what I'm saying here. It's all about content. Content is king. How often should you upload? As as much as possible, as long as that the quality of that content lives up to your internal standard. This is something that you're proud of. It's something you would watch yourself. It's something that you would enjoy to listen to. And it took me forever to finally get to this point with my show because, because I, I loved my screencasts. I got my screencasts to just where I wanted to be. But it just wasn't making me happy. The screencasts alone weren't making me happy. I didn't feel like I was connecting with my audience. I'm a big engager. I love talking to people. I love when you guys email me. I'm not kidding. Craig at PCMTechHelp.com. I, I love getting emails from people. I love getting private messages on, on social media. I don't love chats. Chats drive me nuts. I like the uh, send me a message. I'll get that back to you later chat systems. Um, but... Uh, so, uh, and this is actually somebody who's going to ask a question that is relevant to the topic. I, I will get to your questions quickly. So if you're, if you're in the video now, you can post questions right on YouTube or you can post questions right in the Ask a Question segment on Google+, Plus or below the comment feed on Google+, Plus, by the way. And I will be happy to get to your questions shortly. Um, but upload as often as you can, as long as the content is living up to that standard. Now we're going to go into marketing and branding, but I do want to answer these questions first before I move into that uh, portion of the segment. Thank you guys for joining me. Um, I appreciate all the questions, and it, it really helps, I think, add uh, an engagement quality to the show. So uh, don't hesitate to keep asking. It looks like my, my lip is bleeding, which is kind of awesome. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Hello. I didn't, I, didn't, uh, I didn't see part one. Very happy to listen to this new video. This is Lunang from uh, Google+. Uh, I didn't notice that you could make money with YouTube. Really? Yes, there's multiple avenues. He says, how does it work? There's multiple av avenues, and this video is going to elaborate on all of them, or the, the video before this one and this one. Uh, you can make money on a subscription-based system. In other words, you make like a TV series, and people can subscribe to it. You make money on advertising. That would be monetization. You can make money on sponsorships, where you get other people to sponsor your show. Uh, you can make money on affiliate-based links, where you post affiliate links to products, and people purchase them, and you get a percentage of commission. Uh, there's a number of ways to actually make money on YouTube. It's not just limited to the advertising and AdSense, which a lot of people discuss. It's the most popular. It's what I like to use. Um, but uh, yes, there's a lot of it. And I discuss a, uh, in a little more detail in the last video, but keep watching this, these videos, and you'll, you'll have a very good idea of how it all works and how it all comes together. Excellent question, Lunang. I appreciate it. And um, and uh, I uh, again, I said I think it adds a great engagement element to the show, and it is relevant to the topic. Um, Ming Johansson, I apologize for missing your question at the end of the day uh, yesterday morning. Literally, as soon as I clicked the end broadcast button, her question popped up on my screen. I'm like, really? Because she's a regular listener to the show. She said, "Do you think building a following on Google Plus then YouTube would be a good practice, and does the order matter?" Um. I, I don't I don't have a full solid answer for that yet because I, I did it the opposite. I did YouTube and then Google+. But here's the thing. I don't know if my Google Plus presence has been the main source for my most recent spike or if it's because I've changed my content to the show-based format. So it's hard for me to know at this point which one's better to start with. Um, I would say start with what you love the most because the great thing about Google+, Plus is it allows you to do these hangouts on air. Like right now I'm doing a hangout on air where you guys can ask me questions, I can post answers, I can say answers. And, and if this is the format of your show, I would say it makes too much sense to start with Google+. Plus. So start there. Because if you start a channel on YouTube, you can't immediately do live engagements or live hangouts or live events. That's actually something you unlock later in the show. Um, but uh, the, the great thing about uh, Google+, Plus and YouTube, the integration, um, is that uh, YouTube does allow a unique set of tools, or Google does, uh, to merge the two together, such as Hangouts on Air. And when I publish a video to YouTube, I can auto-share it to my Google Plus profile. And uh, there's just a lot of really cool tools that actually kind of interface between the two. Uh, it really depends on what you love to do. If you love social media and you feel like you can grow a huge following on Google Plus, 
uh, then I would probably start there because, uh, but I would keep making videos at the same time. Does that make sense? You know, start with both. Uh, I think it's a no-brainer to start using Google Plus with YouTube. If you're a YouTuber and you're not using yet, get over there now because if you think this YouTube comment system is the end of the merger, I've been following this for two years, guys, this, this merger. This is still only the beginning. There's still tons of things that are going to happen. And, and a lot of them, I think, are really, really positive. Uh, for this merger. And uh, so, interestingly, make sure you are at least part of, of Google+, Plus. Uh, but it's it's amazing how much growth I've gotten on a daily basis from this Hangout of Air, uh, just when I've gotten started. But uh, if, if you're not a big social media guy, you can sure, certainly do just, just YouTube, and you don't have to worry about Google+. Plus. But I would encourage people to do both. That is an excellent question. Uh, where I would start is I'd still start with videos, I'd still start making content, and I would definitely start... Uh, with making sure that all uh, goes smoothly. Uh, what I'm going to do, actually, I mean, is I'm going to wait toward the, the end of the actual... <laughs> I'm going to wait till the end of the, the video to do your next question because it's about the Google Plus YouTube integration. Uh, and and uh, that's a kind of a loaded question right now for a lot of people, and I don't want to graze past it. Um, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing right now. I'm going to finish this up, and then we're going to get to your question, that question in particular I, I like. Uh, and then we'll move on from there. So we said upload regularly. Make sure that the content stands lives up to your expectations. Now, marketing and branding. This is a loaded, uh, loaded topic for a lot of people. How do I market my product? How do I get myself out there, Craig? How do I get myself out there? I'm tired of making video after video and after video. Nobody's finding me. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I, I, I just, I'm frustrated. It's frustrating. I'm getting 10 views a month or I'm getting 10 views a week. You know what my marketing strategy was starting out? Here's the thing about marketing is it's not as complicated as you think, okay? But it's the easiest thing to overthink. I'm going to say that again. Marketing and branding is not as complicated as you think, but, what was the second part? That's right. It's easy to overthink. That's right. It's not as complicated. The thing about marketing is that you just need to create a, a, a unique name, like we talked about. Even Eli mentioned this earlier. Create a unique name that's easy to type, easy to think of, easy to search. That'll take you some time. That's fine. You don't have to do it right out of the box. Uh, and if, you, if you're like me and I'm the brand, uh, I just use my own name. I don't use really... I, well, PCM is the brand, PCM, but I actually migrated to self-branding a long time ago because I actually preferred my name to be the brand. Um, but uh, you have to come up with something unique, okay? Don't start stealing other people's logos and all that stuff. Come up with something unique. Um, and you don't have to do this immediately. You can This can evolve as the show evolves. And then with marketing, social media. Go back to Google+. Uh, share this video everywhere you possibly can. Now, the thing about uh, social media, my big social media ploy or my big social media, no, push, and, uh, and, I'll, and I see everybody failing at this right now who's in the entertainment business or the YouTube business, almost all of them failing. Laser precision to a single network, okay? This isn't a put your eggs in as many baskets as possible success story, okay? I did that for years. I tried to manage all of my social networks. I'm like, I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Tumblr. I'm on Google+. Plus, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, my space, your space, our space, their space. I went to all these other networks. I was made sure I was everywhere. LinkedIn, I posted all my content across all these networks constantly, constantly, constantly. No growth, nothing, just nothing. And it wasn't the quality of videos because I was getting tons of great feedback on YouTube. They loved the videos, but I was getting nothing. You know why? I had no time left. If you're spending an hour on YouTube and an hour on Google+, and an hour on on, on uh on Tumblr and an hour on Twitter and an hour on Facebook and an hour on LinkedIn. That's six hours, people. Now I just names one off the top of my head. And an hour is actually limited. Most people spend more than an hour. That's six hours you've burnt only getting one hour's worth of engagement on each network. You need to spend that full six hours on a single network. And I'm talking. I'm not talking going out there and, and, and just pushing all your content out there. First of all, that's always a bad idea, just constantly publishing your own stuff. 
I'm talking going out there and finding people who are talking about and, and, and are professionals and doing the exact same thing you're doing. You're joining communities in that network that are talking about the same stuff that you love. If you're a gamer, you're joining gaming communities. You're talking to other people. You're saying, hey, check it out. I have my own channel. And you're talking about other people's channels. And you're, you're pushing. You're like getting people to follow you. You're plus wanting or you're uh, starring or you're retweeting or whatever you're doing. You're liking and you're constantly engaging with tons and tons of people on that network. The biggest mistake I think every YouTuber is making right now, they're trying to stretch themselves way too thin. Social media, done right, is more than a full-time job for, one, for, for multiple people, if it's done right. It's, it's a full-time job, and that's for one network. In my opinion, from what I've learned, if you want to do a network right, you need to be saturated in that network. You need to know the culture. You need to know what they're talking about. You need to know what they love. You need to know when they love it. They need, you need to know what all the hashtags are, why they're talking about them, why they love them. And you need to love them. You need to be part of the whole ecosystem. That's, that's not something you just do by spending an hour on it. But I, I'm, I'm preaching here because I did it. I tried it for years. And then I finally said, you know what? Forget all those other networks. Google Plus is the future of YouTube. I'm just throwing all my chips in here. I'm, i got to do it this way. I'm just throwing all my chips in here. Google Plus is where I'm going. It's where I'm going to be. If people want to get a hold of me, that's where they're going to have to connect with me at. I'm done with it. Threw up my hands. I was finally done with this. Finally done with burning up all that time. And it's worked out with me in, in, in droves. And, and I truly believe in this. In droves. It, the, the dividends are way higher than I've ever had before in social media. For marketing, social media, it's so easy. Once you just realize that you just need to spend it on one network and you have to have a good time and you have to become part of the network, that's it. It's really not that hard. You're going to find people who connect with you who are sharing the same interests. If you love video games, you're going to find other people talking about the games you love. You're going to be plus one of them. You're going to say, ha ha, that's hilarious. It's just part, it, it occurs naturally. You start networking with people. People start finding you and you build a profile over time. Now, the frustrating thing about net, uh, marketing is that what people do is in the next part of this, as I said, they, when they want to monitor their progress. Okay, <laughs> they want to monitor progress, and <laughs> monitoring progress is a nightmare. Um, it, it's 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 the most frustrating thing and most discouraging thing for every content creator out there. YouTube has amazing tools for this. You can use uh, the YouTube analytics system. is just astounding. They will give you everything you need to know about your videos, how long people have been watching them, how many times they've watched it, how, what their attention span was, where your video got this interesting. I mean, it is over. They, they overanalyze your video, one video to death. And it's, it's really, it's invaluable information. But it's very discouraging when you're starting out because you're like, oh, my God, these people didn't like it. Oh no, they they didn't they didn't like it. They disliked it. Oh, they they commented it. Oh oh, but they they stopped watching it after two minutes. Why did they stop watching it after two minutes? And then you just over analyze. Well, I do. You over analyze the content. And and don't get me wrong, this monitoring part is very important. But early on, I would ignore those tools. And, and I might get yelled at for that, maybe by Eli. But unless you have good self discipline and you know what you're doing and know what you're looking at. Until you have a, a like a solidified, in my opinion, a solidified idea of what you want to do, don't look at that. Because the problem is, is if it's not giving you the results you want, which by the way, it's never going to give you the results you want. We always want more than we're going to get. Then you're just going to get discouraged. You're like, oh, I'm doing this wrong. Nobody likes this. I do it all the time. Why am I bothering? It's a waste of my time. Why do I keep moving forward? I should just give up. You know, it's just these numbers hurt you more than they help you. So monitoring progress, it's essential, okay? And, and I'm going to talk about the pros of that. I've talked about the cons. So, But avoid it if you're that kind of person who's going to overthink it. Do not take your numbers personally, okay? You are going to find people who love... If you love it and you're talking about it in as much passion as you were, you're talking about it, you're going to find people who love your content. It's going to happen. Monitoring progress, though, a great thing about this is, is if you're monitoring your progress on your YouTube videos with YouTube Analytics, you can find what types of videos that you're doing are, are more popular. You can find what types of, of sharing on certain networks are, is helping more. Uh, you can, you can like, try different marketing strategies, like different advertising campaigns, and then see if it actually gave you more views than usual. Things like this are, are, are invaluable for measuring, and, and, and YouTube gives you all those tools necessary to do that, and more, to be honest with you. 
Um, but uh, monitoring progress, there's a few things there that you want to make sure you're careful about because even I actually, I, I literally intentionally ignore my, uh, my monitoring tools. Now, I used to look at them daily, daily, which is stupid. Oh, that's another thing about monitoring. Have a set time frame where you're doing number comparisons and, and stick to it. Say, Don't say, I'm going to check this every day because you're going to want to kill yourself. Say, I'm going to check this once a month. I'm going to check this once a week. Am I going to take the numbers personally? I just want to see how things are going, okay? And I'm going to, I'm going to go over all of it. I'm going to see how the videos are doing, and then I'm going, to, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to change, make some modifications to what I do, and I'm going to leave it alone. And then you come back a week later or a month later, whatever your strategy is, and you do it again. And this is just, this is just something that uh, don't do it daily. Please, 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 please do not look at it daily. Daily numbers mean nothing. In my opinion, weekly numbers mean nothing. The only numbers that really are, I think, valid are probably monthly. Uh, because that gives you a true time frame to kind of gauge what's really going on. Now I'm going to get to some questions here because we've got a bunch of them. Um, and and it's, it's, it's awesome uh, that we're getting a bunch of questions. Like I said, I love this part of the show. I'm probably going to end up going over today and be late for work. Huh. Uh, but uh, let's see what we have here. Um, Ming, again, don't worry. I'm going to get to yours at the end of the video because she's talking about the YouTube Google Plus integration. Uh, and that's, like I said, a loaded question. And I want to wait till I'm done with what we're talking about before I get to that. Uh, Luneng says, how much can you expect for a video with 1,000 views? What, what is the metric? And is it the same as analytics? How much can you expect? It really depends. I've seen people earn everywhere from a dollar per thousand views all the way up to twenty five dollars per thousand views so that's kind of a, a broad range and, and the amount of factors that come in into play on that are astounding I mean it depends on what you're talking about when you're talking about it uh, who's paying for what kind of advertising how that advertising is relevant to your audience uh, the Google advertising uh, system or algorithm is so sophisticated that nobody really knows what you're going to earn uh, over time, you will develop something called an average, and it's called a CPM, average CPM, or cost per thousand impressions, which is what you're talking about. How much money will you make per thousand views? I'm not allowed to disclose how much I make per thousand views, but what, what this number will tell you over time is, is you will see how much money on average you're going to make for every 1,000 views across all your videos, across all your content. That number will shift. You can actually look at it on a, on a video by video basis now, too. You can actually see how many how much money you made per thousand impressions on that video. So you can actually start looking at what videos are actually making you more money from advertising than others. But remember, advertising is seasonal. Uh, it depends on your market. So if you're in gaming, a new game system might be coming out, you're probably making more if you're talking about gaming at that time because the new console systems are paying more for advertising. But there's a lot of factors that come into play which determine how much money you make. The important thing is, is that Google's going to give you all that information. And they're going to give you that information Literally, with full disclosure, you're going to be able to see firsthand what's making you money, what's not, what's a waste of your time, what is. And really, at the end of the day, do you care? You're like, if you're like me, I don't, I never really went into this for money to begin with. If I did, I probably wouldn't still be doing it. Actually, I definitely wouldn't, just would still not be doing it. But, but what it'll do is it'll give you an idea of, uh, of whether you want to continue on down a path that you're experimenting with. But, uh, but I never really, like I didn't go for the higher CPM video topics. Uh, I've had people tell me, I've had even Eli tell me, dude, you need to move into more advanced topics. You're gonna make more money that way. And I'm like, I, I don't. It's not in me, man. I just don't. I don't have a passion for it like you do. You know, and that's the problem. And I'm not you. I don't want to replace you. I think you're great at what you do. So I'd much rather if somebody wants to know an advanced computer tech topic, go subscribe to Eli the Computer Guy. It, it, it's what he loves to do. This is what I love to do what I'm doing right now. Engage with people, educate, teach on, a, on what I'd like to think is like a sociological business uh, technology level. Uh, it, I, I can't even explain it. It's kind of a weird thing. But uh, this is what I love to do. I'm doing it right now. Um, does it make more money than other people? I don't know. Maybe. Probably. Does it make less than more other people? Probably. So it, it's a catch-22. So there is no set number that you're going to get paid. If you get this many views, you will get paid this much money. It, that's not how it works at all. Um, Stephen Hughes has an awesome question. Craig, uh, and hey Steve, uh, thank you for the hello. Uh, can you expand on the best practices on video length? One minute, three minutes? Is there some advice you can share on length? Shorter the better, uh, in my experience, but it really depends on the format. Uh, like, because what I'm doing now, like this show, 
I couldn't explain to you guys in full detail how to handle YouTube and how to really succeed making money on YouTube in four minutes, five minutes. You have to know your audience. If they're an audience that's looking for information, what I learned with screencasts, for example, if they're there just to pick up a piece of information and walk away, you got to get to that information and that information in the title as soon as possible. You got to hammer it out. You got to get them educated and you got to get out of there. It's like a drive-by message. Uh, and it, like I said, it really depends on the format of the show. Uh, if it's like a podcast, I've noticed like 10 minutes is like the sweet, sweet mark. Like if you have like a daily podcast, um, I know this is the same for like um, like Chris Perillo used to do a TLDR, a daily tech report. I think his sweet spot was around five to ten minutes. Um, but usually people aren't going to sit there for for hours and listen to a show like a show like mine. You're probably right now. You're probably have it on in the background. And that's kind of what I was going for with this short, short format. But if you're not going to go for this kind of show format, I recommend you make sure you stick to more of a, a five to ten minute structure as kind of like a sweet spot. If you're doing tutorials and stuff, two to three minutes. Uh, when I went over that, it was kind of, you get a lot of drop off. Unless it's a really, really extended tutorial that has a ton of information in it, then you can drag it out. Cur uh, Eli does classes, and so his full length classes are hour or two hours long. Uh, well, yeah, but but how is that any different than you going to, uh, you know, you going to a, a semester or a class at school? You know, it makes sense. The format makes sense to be that long. So again, it depends on your audience and it depends on the format of your show. Um, and really, like I said, just just make sure you love what you're producing, um, and uh, and go from there. And and I don't get caught up in this idea that some things are more profitable than others. They are, but again. Make sure your focus keeps coming back to what you're passionate about. Are you happy with what you're doing? Would you watch what you're doing? That should be your guiding light, I would like to say. Uh, if you are passionate about it and you would watch it, and actually I started listening to my podcast the other day, and I never listened to my content before. It drives me nuts usually because I don't like listening to me. And I've listened to my past few podcasts. I, like, I, I, I'm happy with this. I, I kind of like, really, really like how this is turning out. You know, It's just one of those things. It's like I, I like it. I like the format. I'm enjoying it. And so now that I'm happy with it, I'm doing it more, you know, and that's really what matters, I think, is that you're happy with it. So let's see what we got here. We got more questions on YouTube. Don't worry, Ming, I see yours on Google+. And um, hang on one second, it's reloading. Okay, uh, Blue Caffeine says, just wondering, what time do you go to bed? Because it's really early. <laughs> I got work off at three. I got off work at 3:40 a.m. this morning, and wondering what time do you go to bed? Last night I was actually at the Xbox One release. Yes, I am a big time gamer, and actually gaming is one of the primary reasons I am as smart as I am. I swear, it's it's why I'm such a good learner. I grew up playing Mario, Zelda, puzzle solvers, uh, video games, video games, video games my whole life. Um, but I was up at the Xbox One. I got lucky. I got a console that day, same day, and I'm actually you're gonna learn more about that. I do an entertainment-based show, by the way, uh, Craig and Chris show with my buddy, and we're gonna be doing the Xbox One stuff next week. And that's CraigandChris.com. Uh, it's a whole different channel, uh, and you guys, if you're into that kind of thing, you can subscribe. Uh, but I went to bed at like one o'clock last night, and I just woke up at like seven thirty. But I got kids, dude. I'm used to no sleep at this point. I mean, you just you just get used to it, and it's amazing. Actually, kids give you a lot of discipline in that area. If you ever want to get good at waking up early, have kids because you're never going to have a choice. And then eventually it turns into a habit. I always wondered how my parents got away with it, how they learned how to do it, and I, that now I know. It's like they, they had us. And then by the time we got old enough to realize, like, wow, how does he get up at 5 o'clock every morning? Well, probably because he got up at 5 o'clock morning for five years of his life from screaming children, and now it's a habit. You know, it's just, it happens naturally. Blank Bantam says of YouTube, is it necessary to have thumbnails for videos? If so, how can I create and make them? Excellent question, Blake. Uh, I think I have a video on that on my channel. Uh, but if I don't, it's very easy to use the GIMP. That is at my website. Free downloads, by the way, at pcmtechhelp.com forward slash download. All my favorite downloads are on there. But you're looking for the GIMP, GNU Image Manipulation Program. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that you are using a, uh, a widescreen format. I don't know the exact resolution off the top of my head. But what you're going to do is you're going to create a, uh, you'll probably want to look up some tutorials on this, how to create thumbna YouTube thumbnail with the GIMP. I guarantee you there'll be slews of them out there. And uh, the GIMP is free. That's why I love it. Uh, but it's not necessary, but I recommend it, taking a still shot that at least is kind of funny or endearing or welcoming. I didn't do it for the longest time. Once I started doing it, it was worth it. 
at just doing a thumbnail with some text over the top of it, it, it does a lot of, it, I think it makes a lot of good. Uh, I think it helps a lot. And Blue Caffeine says, this man is awesome. Thanks. I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. Let's get back to the topic at hand, everybody. And, uh, oh, wait, I should probably check our Google Plus stream since I told you guys I would be monitoring it, which usually people don't, don't actually. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. Nobody's posted anything on that one, so we can move forward with the episode. Um, we talked about monitoring your progress. Great. Always good to monitor your progress. Make sure you don't take it personally, and I would probably have a set time, once a week, once a month, in which you actually sit down and do true monitoring of your progress. I think you need a reasonable time frame in order to get a realistic perspective of how things are really going. Um, monitoring progress is one thing, but remember, let's get started. You need an AdSense account, right? Well, not necessarily. If you're going to monetize your uh, YouTube content with advertising, you know when you go to a video and it's got a pre-roll video advertisement? Or if you go to um, uh, a video and it's got like that little pop-up box below it or a post-roll advertisement, that's called uh, AdSense or TrueView Advertising, and it's built into the AdSense system for YouTube. Do you have to use that system for making money on YouTube? Absolutely not. I think it's the easiest. It's what I use. The way AdSense works, as I talked about it briefly yesterday, is Google goes out and finds the advertisers for you. And they uh, spend billions, billions of dollars making sure that by the time that advertisement hits your video, it's relevant to the person watching the video. It's relevant to the content you're talking about. It's a highly engaging video, which means it's in increased the chances the viewer will watch it or click on it, thus increasing your chances of revenue. And it'll actually increase the absolute necessary uh, reliability between or relationship between you and the content or the advertiser. Google has literally eliminated all the frustration of a content producer having to go out and get advertising for their business. And uh, it, while you will make a lot more money if you do that yourself, in other words, if you go out and hunt for a sponsor, uh, you're going to make a lot more money because you're not paying Google commission. Google gets a commission of all the ad time and ad space, and they're highly competitive, so that drives down the actual revenue you're going to get. Uh, you're going to make more money if you go out and hunt for your own sponsors. But the AdSense program is probably hands down one of the most solidified formats for this. The easiest to use because you can focus on what you love to do. You can focus on producing the content. Google will take care of the advertisers. They'll take care of the advertisements. They'll take care of all the trending advertisements. And they'll make sure the right advertisements are reaching the right people at the right time. And you can just go on doing what you, you love to do. And that's creating your content. Huge fan of the system. Been using it for years. Still love it. <clears throat> and uh, I can't complain. Um, how do you apply for one? AdSense.Google.com. Now, that's not going to make you a YouTube partner. If you go to your channel settings on YouTube, there's actually a button to uh, apply for a YouTube partnership. Once you've applied for a YouTube partnership and you've been accepted, you can actually, it will prompt you to actually redirect you, then sign up for AdSense. If you're too young to have an AdSense, and this is actually for you young viewers out there, <clears throat> don't worry about it, okay? You're not going to make money until you're 18. AdSense won't take you. But they're not going to stop you from growing a huge viewer base and a huge audience base before you're 18. You can start building your content and building your empire long before you can monetize it. You can still get sponsors, technically, um, but uh, YouTube's not going to let you become an AdSense partner until you turn 18 plus, and that's just part of the deal. But uh, it doesn't mean you should not make your YouTube channel and not start generating content because you'll be like years or light years ahead of the time of all of us who were old enough to finally do it and we got into it when we didn't have spare time. If you're a kid and you want to talk about a topic and start a YouTube channel and grow your channel, man, now is the time to get in. And if you follow the tips I'm giving you in this video, man, you're going to be rich by the time you're in your 30s. I'm, I'm telling you, this, this is not a joke. Uh, so it, it's a lot of fun. It's a good time. But you'll just grow your subscriber base and your viewer base. The day you turn 18, apply for your partnership, get your partnership, sign up for your AdSense account, and then, boom, literally within days, you'll be making your first money off of all that established audience and, uh, <clears throat> and all the viewer base. So that's, that's a cool part about it. Uh, but AdSense is one of the, the funnest ways, most fun ways. Uh, but if you're not a partner yet, you got to get started. you got to start making content. you got to wait until you have at least, from what, I'm, what I remember, 100,000 views before you apply for your partnership. I know it seems like a lot, um, but that's what I recommend you do. Um, but uh, that's, that's probably one of the most prominent parts. So... We've really kind of reached the end of this, okay? You can go out and get sponsors. And there's a lot of good tips on how to do that. You can go out and uh, start affiliate links. I'm a big fan of uh, Amazon for that, Amazon affiliates for that. Uh, and that's where you post a link and you get a percentage of commission if people buy it. 
Um, and you can do unboxings and reviews and post those links in the descriptions and things like that. If people buy the product, you get a commission. Um, those are more like revenue models, though. The, the commission ones are more revenues. You'll get more revenue on that if you have a huge following. You're not going to make a lot of money on that until you have a few huge, huge following. Because, I mean, if your commission rate is 1% to 5%, you're going to get one to five dollars for every hundred dollars you sell, and so I mean you're going to have to sell thousand dollars to get ten to fifty bucks. So I mean you really have to move a lot of product to make some decent money at that. But uh, but it's entirely possible, entirely possible. So before I give my final words of encouragement for this show, I'm going to get to your guys' questions. I'm going to answer those really quick, and then uh, we're going to close this how to make money on YouTube series. Okay, not relevant, says Ming. Oh, wow, we can go all the way down here. Okay, uh, I can't tell which one came in first. It kind of uh, kind of keeps bouncing around. Okay, um, <clears throat> I'll get to Ming's question first here. Is there really a, really a downside to the Google Plus and YouTube integration? I'm not really seeing a downside. Wouldn't it mean that there's a better quality of interaction and viewers in, in an ideal world? Uh, absolutely, there's absolutely a downside for a lot of people who are uh, who are part of YouTube. Um, and there's also some distinct limitations that have actually drove a lot of content producers insane. Uh, and that is that uh, th there's no real clear defining way to respond to comments properly. Uh, this is a big issue, I think, that they need to resolve as soon as possible. So if you're in a YouTube video and somebody's making a comment thread and you can't always reply to it because you're not following that person on Google+, Plus, or they only shared it with a certain select group of people, and this is creating a problem for people actually being able to engage on certain comment threads, and it's actually degrading the user experience for a lot of users on YouTube because they just want to go to a video and comment on it, which is fine. But they shouldn't have, to, in my opinion, Google should not have taken away their ability to do that easily. Um, in other words, you should be able to follow somebody immediately, and, or if you try to post a comment, it should tell them why they can't post a reply. Oh, you can't post a reply until you join this community. They've started doing that. Or you can't post a reply because this was shared privately. Or you can't post... You know, give us an explanation as to why we can't engage this content. Um, and then give them an option to sort content by content they can engage in. Uh, I mean, there's, there's a couple of ways they could have improved, I think, the YouTube side's user experience on this. And I think that's kind of what hurt, has hurt them the most in this integration. In the long run, I, I, you've heard me talk about this a number of times, I think it's going to be awesome for YouTube. I think this whole, like you said, the interaction with viewers, the things I can do with you with Hangouts, um, it, it's going to be a no-brainer in the long run because you can actually connect with your users. There's actually, you guys don't even know this yet, but there's behind-the-scenes tools that lets me connect with my top YouTube fans on Google+. And that top is based on like how many subscribers they have, and I can actually add them all to a circle at the same time. So I can start following all of my fans like immediately, and add them all to a Google Plus circle, and I can start engaging with them on social media instantly. That's unbelievable. I can start sharing content to just those people. I mean, it's it's awesome. I can start responding to theirs. I can see what they're posting and see what they're talking about. And that's just it's it's unbelievable what kind of engagement you can get out of that through Google Plus. So I think in the long run it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome for content producers. I think it's gonna be an awesome experience. And what's really gonna happen, and like I said, I still think it's the most beautiful format, is it's gonna be a truly immersive community and uh, production uh, experience when it's done. I mean, you're gonna have you're gonna have during a live broadcast or during an interview or during a show, you'll be able to probably watch it with your viewers on this debut day. You'll be able to sit there and talk to them about it while you're doing it, doing commentaries. I mean, the the potential is literally limitless. All the cool things you could probably do with your viewers, and and it's just it's awesome. It's just an awesome uh, service, and and honestly, I I don't see it being a detrimental thing in the long run to YouTube. So excellent question. Um, which service do you think is better in terms of making money, Helpouts or YouTube? Personally, I don't know. I haven't used Helpouts. Or are you are you talking Hangouts? Because Helpouts, I haven't used personally. I've heard about them, um, but I have no experience with them. I'm probably not the best person to ask that question for. I'm a little biased because I love YouTube so much, um, but I don't really know how the uh, monetary system of Helpouts works. If you can elaborate on that, I can probably share some of my previous experience with Helpouts. Not with Helpouts, but monetary systems like Helpouts. Um, and we can kind of go from there. But uh, sorry, I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, Coco Win of Google Plus. Um, hopefully, uh, 
hopefully if you elaborate on it a little more I can I can do that. Um, let's see what we have here. Um, Ming asks of Google Plus, so it seems to be a lack of awareness of music copyright. A wedding video has a hit song that gets muted because of copyright violation. However, in some cases it doesn't. My understanding is the artist gets the profits. Um, yes, if you are using music that is in copyright, Google will flag it and they will pull the monetization from the video or they will issue you a warning. You are not legally, monetization-wise, allowed to use uh, video content that is, or music, or media, or anything that is is not uh, with doesn't have express permission. And Google's gotten really good about catching this. They have automated systems that hear this audio clip and it cross compares it and all that, and then it tells you this audio clip is owned by this person. You have to show us proof that you have permission from this person. So they've made that process simplified. They don't just say you're not in compliance and shut you down. Um, but uh, they've kind of elaborated on it a little bit more. Uh, but the understanding, your understanding is correct. The person who created the original music tone or whatever, they should get credit for that work that they put into it. We shouldn't just be able to profit off of everybody else's work, you know what I mean? So that's kind of one of the, the big deals with that. <laughs> I love this question from Cassie B. of Google+. She says, how do you deal with the negative comments you may get from time to time when your channel starts to get popular? In what ways do you leave a room for constructive criticism? I have Chris Perillo's uh, Nomi's group to thank for this. Um, I went through what I would call like a really dark place with my YouTube channel, and it was a couple months where I just got so down on myself because of all the negative feedback I was getting. And, uh, and it wasn't until I watched uh, or I posted my frustrations to the Nomi's group. I'm part of the Nomi's group. It's Chris Perillo's mastermind group, and it's a wonderful group. I haven't been there in a few days or weeks, actually. I've been meaning to get back there. Um, it's, it's paid for. It's a yearly fee. It's really reasonable. I think it's like $100 a year. Um, but Chris Perillo regularly participates in there. And so I post on there, and I'm like, you know what, guys? I just don't know if this is worth it. I, I have to deal with too many negative people. Um, I don't really know if I'm making progress. I can't tell what's working and what's not. And then Chris Perillo came back and he said, when you're getting negative feedback, it means you've made it. And then he posted a video uh, that kind of changed my whole perspective on things. And the name of that video was, I Hate Chris Perillo. And I kind of cheesed a little bit, and I clicked on the video. And this was literally a 5 to 10 minute dissertation or explanation as to why Chris Perillo was like evil, the devil, and not not like literally, but they, why they hated him, they despised him, they wish he was dead, things like this. It was the most hateful thing I had ever seen anybody post on the internet about somebody. One of the most hateful things. And I'm sitting here watching this, and I'm going, "Wow, there's just some people out there that are this way." You know what I mean? And and it's not really reflective of <clears throat> a lot of time these people. They're just they're going through a rough patch in their lives or whatever, or they're dealing with immaturity or their own issues, and they're taking it out on you. I don't know what the issues are. It doesn't matter. But 99% of the time, that's all it is. And so Chris gave me some invaluable advice at that point. He said, the block button is your friend. Do not hesitate to use the block button. And I, I've used that philosophy ever since, and I've never been happier. You are going to take the, the real hurtful people aren't the ones who say the lewd and crude things. They're the ones that mask it in like an intellectual argument as explaining to you why you're an idiot. You know what I mean? They'll go through all this this explanation as to why you're wrong, and why you shouldn't be on YouTube, and why you're wasting your time. Those are the ones you probably take the most personally. But I would still say if the post, the, the tone of the post is negative and not constructive, block it. That's been my strategy ever since, and actually it's, it's helped immensely with my content production, and it's helped eliminate a lot of that negative dissertation and back and forth in the comment feed. I think it's improved the actual viewer experience as well. Um, but that's probably what I could recommend is the best way of dealing with negative. You cannot, you cannot take anything over the internet personally. You are going to, but you will get, you will get over time, you will get really good at not giving a crap at what people think. And I mean that literally. You will get exceptional at not caring what people think of you. And that's all part of the growth process. It's all part of you becoming the entertainer or news broadcaster or podcaster or YouTuber you were meant to be. And this is going to happen no matter what you try to succeed at. Remember, if you pursue any avenue of success, there will be, for every one person who encourages you, there are going to be thousands that try to tear you down. Thousands. And that's just part of the, it's just part of the deal, unfortunately. So that was an excellent question. I appreciate it. 
Ming says, not relevant. You've probably answered this in one of your Hangouts and I've watched them. Uh, haven't watched them all yet. What's the microphone you're using? I am using the Blue Snowball microphone. I actually did mention it slightly in yesterday's video, just, just for a, a brief second. It's my favorite microphone I've used to date. It was $60, and it's USB. And, uh, and I love the audio quality that comes out of it. For the price, in my opinion, you still can't beat it. Um, <clears throat> it's got its limitations. Like, you see how close it is to my face? In order to get really, really good audio, it has to be this close to my face. It's a podcasting microphone. Uh, so, really, it's designed to be in close range. It has its... It's got that full... You, you can do a full circle 360 recording. It just doesn't sound as good. I don't think the audio is as good. But it's capable of doing more than this close. I just don't think it's as good a quality. So, thanks for the question, Ming. I liked it. Lunang says, thanks for all the recommendations. No problem. No problem, Lunang. And Ming says, one more question. Um, I don't want to monopolize the session. It's taking a while to figure out time difference. Uh, oh, hey, no problem. I, I enjoy the questions. It, it really doesn't bother me. <clears throat> but I am going to have to wrap things up because I'm already actually late for work, guys. Um, but let's see what we have here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see. i got a couple more questions here on YouTube before we close out. Okay. 1280 by 720 for the YouTube thumbnail. Of course. I should have known that. It's, it's just an HD resolution. You can either do a 1280 by 720 rev resolution or a 1920 by 1080. They're both the same ratio, but uh, that will work fine for your YouTube thumbnail. Thank you, All Is Magic 1 of YouTube. Appreciate that. Uh, then he asks, do you think the new fan tool finder for YouTube is promising advertising for free? Will it boost down the earnings of YouTube partners? Because we are not paying anything to YouTube for this fan finder. I think the fan finder is an awesome opportunity. I think it's just another tool they're giving you. Because <clears throat> Google, I think, sees the future of uh, online entertainment being engagement and uh, in, in connection with your audience through social media. This is one of the tools they're giving YouTubers so that they can see the potential in Google+. Plus as they're migrating to it. For example, they just released this whole YouTube comment integration, and everybody's like, oh, I'm freaking out. How is this going to help me? And then so Google says, okay, go to the Fan Finder. You can follow all of your top fans right there, and then so right when you get started on Google+, you have people to follow, and they're already connected to you in some way through YouTube. So I think they give you something to kind of start with. That's like a starting point for connecting with your audience. But again, like I said earlier in this, Online marketing is something laser precision. You have to really get yourself in there and dig in there <clears throat> and connect with people on a very personal level. So I'm going to close this video with some important points here. If you're thinking about starting your own YouTube channel, be prepared to be patient. Be prepared to be patient. But do not wait. Start going and keep going. Do not get discouraged like some of our people said today, do not let them pull you down. Do not let the thousands of people rip you down. Do not let your marketing and, and analysis tools pull you down. Do not let yourself be deceived by these numbers. If you're passionate about what you're talking about, you're going to find tons of other people who are passionate about what you're talking about. So do not wait. Get started today. Pull out your camera. I don't care. Use your webcam. Get started today and keep going. What you're going to get over time is the accumulative effect. I talked about it briefly in yesterday's episode. Your growth is going to be very, 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 very slow at the beginning, and you're going to start out as it's like a straight line, but it's exponential growth. All of your previous videos are going to start working for you as you grow. And as you progress, weeks, months, years, every video you've made historically will continue to work for you, <clears throat> and it will have an accumulative effect over time because you will become a huge prominent presence in whatever topic you're talking about. Make sure you title your videos, <coughs> excuse me, make sure you title your videos something somebody would type into a search. Don't make it vague or try your best to be creative, but um, don't be too creative so that nobody can find you. The differences between success and failure have nothing to do with money. They have nothing to do with subscriber counts. They have nothing to do with views. You're successful if you're happy with what you're doing and you're enjoying it every time you do it. You are a failure even if you're making loads of cash and you're unhappy. It's a very simple process. Stay true to yourself. It's one of the absolute most essential parts of YouTube. It's called YouTube. And it's called YouTube for a reason. So until next time, everybody, this is Craig Chamberlain. 
the PCM Tech Help Show. I'm here to give you guys common sense advice for that tech in your life. Happy Friday. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. I will be filming again with Craig, uh, I'm sorry, with Chris on the Craig and Chris Show on YouTube this weekend, and uh, we're going to be doing a lot of fun Xbox-related stuff, as well as our usual hangout show, craigandchris.com. Make sure you subscribe and like this video before you take off, and also... Don't forget, you can email me at any time, Craig at PCMTechHelp.com. I appreciate all of your feedback because, remember, this show is about, about, all about you. And don't forget, <clears throat> do not be mastered by the machine. And I'm not just talking about computers. Have a wonderful day, everybody. I will see you in the next video.